Hi everyone, it's Miss Debbie. It's been about 300 years since Moses led the people out of Egypt and into the land that God had promised them. And they were okay and settled, and then they decided they wanted a king like all the other nations around them. Ugh, God didn't like this idea, but he gave in and he named King Saul as the first king of Israel. And Saul did a pretty good job for a while. He obeyed God, but then he decided he might be smarter than God and more powerful than God. And so he started to disobey God and things got bad. And God said, it's time for a change. So he sent his prophet Samuel to the home of Jesse, who had many sons. And he said, I'd like to meet your sons. God is looking for a king. And so all of the sons came in front of Samuel, and one by one, as they met Samuel, God said, no, not this one. No, not this one. And Samuel said, Jesse, do you have any more sons? And he said, well, I do, but he's, he's out in the field with the sheep. And Samuel said, please bring him. And David came in and stood in front of Samuel, and God said, yes, yes, this is the one. And Samuel anointed David's head with oil as a sign of God's blessing and promise that one day he would be the king of Israel. That's where our story gets started tonight. Let's get started. God's people, the Israelites, were at war again, this time with people called the Philistines. The Israelite army assembled on one hill and the Philistine army was facing them on another hill with a valley in between them. King Saul was with the Israelite army, preparing them for battle. Men, it's time to be brave. This day we fight. But the Philistines sent only one man onto the battlefield. His name was Goliath and he was nine feet tall. Nine feet tall. His armor alone weighed more than a hundred pounds and it covered him from head to toe. His spear was as long and as big around as a young tree and he also carried a javelin that was made of bronze. And another soldier had to carry his giant shield. Goliath marched onto the field and shouted, Pick one of your men to fight me. If he wins, we Philistines will be your slaves. But if I win, you will become our slaves. I dare you to pick a man to fight with me. Goliath marched up and down that valley, repeating that challenge every day for 40 days. When King Saul and his soldiers heard Goliath, they were terrified. Did I mention Goliath was nine feet tall? The youngest of eight brothers, David took care of the family's sheep in the hills outside Bethlehem. He was too young to be in the army, but his older three brothers were now soldiers in King Saul's army. Occasionally, his father, Jesse, would send him to the battlefield with food and say, please tell me that your brothers are okay. Come back and tell me that they're safe and well. I will. David arrived at the battlefield just as Goliath walked into the valley between the two armies. 
Who will fight me? The giant yelled as the Israelites trembled in fear. Now King Saul had promised a great reward for any soldier who would fight Goliath. But even with that reward, mm -mm, no one, no one would fight Goliath. David couldn't believe his eyes. What? Who will save Israel from this disgrace? Who does this Philistine think he is? Shouting like this at the army of the living God. David greeted his brothers and gave them the food that their father Jesse had sent for them. Just then, David's oldest brother Eliab saw David and came over. David, what are you doing here? It's not safe. You need to go home, baby brother. But I, I brought the food that father gave us and, and I wanted to make sure that you were all right. Now King Saul heard what David said about Goliath and he wanted to talk to him. Your Majesty, you don't have to worry about this Goliath. Don't lose heart. I'll fight him. You'll fight him? Oh, you're a, you're a kid. He's been fighting for years. And did I mention he's nine feet tall? I've been fighting lions and bears to take care of my sheep for years. God has saved me from that. Surely he will save me from Goliath. All right then, but at least take my armor. No, no, that would be too heavy for me. I know what to do. David took his shepherd stick, his sling, and five smooth stones from the stream and went out to meet Goliath. When Goliath saw that the soldier they had sent to fight him was just a boy, he was insulted and got even angrier. Do you think I'm a dog? Will you beat me with your stick? Come closer, boy. I'll feed you to the birds. David stared up at Goliath. You come against me with weapons of bronze, but I come against you in the name of the God of Israel to show the power of the living God. God doesn't need swords or spears to save his people. Goliath started to come at David, but David reached into his bag, pulled out a stone, put it in his sling, swung it over his head, aimed right at Goliath. The stone flew and hit Goliath right in the head. It hit him so hard that he fell down right at David's feet. He was dead. And the rest of the Philistine army, the ones who weren't nine feet tall, they ran away as fast as they could when they saw the power of Israel's God revealed in a kid with a stick, a sling, and five smooth stones. Whoa, talk about take heart. David wasn't afraid of a soldier nine feet tall, but King Saul and his whole army were. So what was different about David? Goliath was just a big bully. He wasn't afraid of anybody because he was bigger than everybody. But David knew that the God of Israel was bigger than anything, especially Goliath. Saul only trusted his helmet and his armor, but David trusted God who kept him safe back in his field from the lions and the bears, so he knew that he could trust God to keep him safe from Goliath. God knew David's heart even when he was a kid. That's how Samuel found him. And that's why God chose to make David the next king of Israel after Saul.
and David is still regarded as the greatest king of Israel. See you next time.